You guys have been asking for it, man. And finally, I have delivered. Courtesy of ProWrestlingTees.com, you can now own the official WWE Off The Script t-shirt. And to get yours today, all you gotta do is simply go to www.ProWrestlingTees.com slash Off The Script and you now can represent the number one fucking source for all WWE right here on YouTube.com. www.prowrestlingtees.com slash WWE off the script. And remember, hashtag fuck those other guys, man. What is going on, guys? JD from New York here, and what a fucking week we had with WWE Battleground, man. Unfucking believable. Seriously. I don't remember such a bigger weekend, man, in my channel's history than this past weekend with WWE Battleground, man. Elimination Chamber was huge. That review did over 160,000 views. Money in the Bank was good. WrestleMania was good. But Battleground with The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar staring each other down did monster numbers, man. Absolutely big for my channel. I want to thank everyone, new and old, who stopped by my channel, subscribed, liked, favorited, shared it, whatever, man. Thank you. For stopping by the channel and checking my shit out, man. It's absolutely amazing. Battleground did 90,000 plus views, man. With close to 900 likes. My WWE 2K15 match simulations for Owens and Cena, Rollins and Lesnar, man. Did huge numbers. And off the script that weekend, again, fucking phenomenal. So I want to thank each and every one of you who came out to show some support, man. We're going to do the same thing. Leading into SummerSlam, and I can guarantee you, your number one fucking source right here on YouTube.com will be JD and off the script. Thank you guys so much for joining me on your Friday to start your weekend off the right way, man. This is number 75, part number one, and I got a lot of news to get into, guys. We got huge news on Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. What is WWE's plans going forward through SummerSlam and potentially to WrestleMania 30, 32 in Dallas, man? It's going to be fucking massive. It's going to be huge, all right? Now, I do want to start off by saying, I'm not going to go into my intro with the Twitter, Twitch, Instagram. You guys know the fucking deal. You want to follow me on social media, it's right there in front of you. Do so, all right? I want to talk about the main story on today's show, part one. And that is going to be Kevin Owens and John Cena. A lot of you guys interpret me as a John Cena dick rider. That's what a lot of people have been saying in my review for Battleground. That's what you guys have been spreading across my off-the-script comment sections. JD is a John Cena Dick Rider. Granted, okay, I might deserve some of that hate because I think John Cena is doing a fabulous job with the United States Championship, okay? But I want to throw it out there for you guys. John Cena is not burying anybody. John Cena did not bury Rusev. John Cena did not bury Bray Wyatt. John Cena did not bury Kevin Owens. The people that are responsible for those burials is WWE Creative. Vince McMahon. Kevin Dunn. Those are the people responsible for what happened to each and every one of those guys. And lastly... Kevin Owens. John Cena didn't bury anybody. John Cena goes out there and does what he's told. Granted, he might not be the fucking 
most spectacular WWE wrestler of all time. But his name is going to draw money. John Cena's name is going to bring prestige to a once useless fucking title that was used as a fucking prop for the likes of Dean Ambrose and Sheamus and everybody else before him who fucking carried that belt, man. It was nothing. Nothing. John Cena is bringing some legitimacy to the United States title. John Cena did not bury Kevin Owens, okay? Now, I will agree with each and every one of you. John Cena and Kevin Owens did not need to happen. It did not need to go down the way it did at Battleground. If it was up to me, the match would have never happened. Okay? I was preaching on Twitter why the second match was even happening. But I understood it. Then it came to a third match, and I'm like, you know what? Enough is enough already, man. Now they're just trying to accumulate the money and get people to subscribe, etc., etc., because they put on two fabulous matches to begin with, and they might strike again with a third match and just do the same thing over and over again, man. But it was the same match that we've seen the first two times. So it really did not need to happen. It did not need to happen. Colt Cabana even stated what I said on my show, on my Battleground Review, on his podcast, said, listen, if you want Kevin Owens to remain looking strong, then you could have had him just pass out. Faint. Don't submit. Don't tap. But then again, a lot of people who thought of that scenario said, you know what, Kevin Owens is a heel, and it doesn't look good for heels to pass out. That's something a face would do. And then try and come back and get revenge. But it would have been a nice scenario for Kevin Owens and his mantra, fight Owens fight, instead of just fucking tapping out to John Cena, causing a fucking uproar on social media, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, all across the WWE universe, with the people that, that thought Kevin Owens should have won the United States Championship. Now... Kevin Owens, I have news on Kevin Owens, and I'm, I'm going to get there, but I want to explain to you guys that it's WWE creative that is fucking up here. Now, I see the bigger picture. What you guys don't understand, what you guys are fucking criticizing me about, is that Kevin Owens shouldn't have lost. I understand that, but I'm looking at the bigger picture, guys. Kevin Owens will be fine. Kevin Owens will be fine. But what I'm about to read to you pisses me off because WWE is so hot and cold with everything that they do and they don't stick to the fucking plan. Obviously, we know Kevin Owens now is being de-pushed. He's being brought down a notch or two. Okay? But. But. Again, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Wade Keller, on his podcast, said, and I'm throwing this out there to you guys because I listened to everybody under the fucking sun when it came to analysis about Battleground because I wanted to see how it stacked up against mine. If you had Kevin Owens beat John Cena and win the United States Championship. Now, I was one of you guys, like I said, that thought Kevin Owens should have won. Should have beat John Cena. If Kevin Owens did win the United States title, if he did beat John Cena, what is next for him to conquer? John Cena's not going anywhere. John Cena's not retiring tomorrow. John Cena's not hanging up the boots. He's always going to be there like a fucking bad rash. He will be there. If Kevin Owens beat John Cena, realistically, I want you guys to think about this. Answer this yourselves. What, what, what would Kevin Owens do next? Where would they go with him? What would there be for Kevin Owens to conquer? John Cena is the biggest name on the roster. Okay? Easy. 
You guys know it. I know it. He already beat John Cena once. He already pinned John Cena fucking two months ago. Something that 99% of the WWE roster cannot say, cannot put on their resume, man. That was the first time John Cena was pinned clean in 10 years. That's a huge statistic. Kevin Owens came up from Ring of Honor. Signed with WWE, was put into NXT, was given the NXT title in two months. Obviously, they have big plans for him. They had him beat John Cena in his first major pay-per-view. Obviously, they have big plans for him. But, WWE and Vince McMahon and this fucking asshole, Kevin Dunn, are trying to sabotage Kevin Owens. It's not John Cena's fault, guys. It's Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon. They are so hot and cold on everything. They never go through with pushing somebody and letting them go. They always push them and then reel them in. They don't want it. Why? I don't know. But I do know it's for political reasons. If you are not liked by the big head honchos in WWE, whether it's WWE or any business, if you are not liked by the men in charge, you're not going anywhere. And this is what's happening with Kevin Owens. Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon want to sabotage Kevin Owens. Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon do not like anyone who comes up from NXT. Nobody. Point given, Adam Rose, Bo Dallas, Emma, Paige went through her fucking, her, uh, you know, ordeal until WWE and Vince McMahon lightened up and now made her one of the faces of the Divas division. The Ascension, now Kevin Owens. What's going to happen with Sami Zayn? Where has Neville been for the last couple of weeks? What's going to happen with Zayn, like I said? What's going to happen with Finn Balor? What's going to happen with Tyler Breeze? What's going to happen with Baron Corbin? Corbin, what's going to happen with Samoa Joe? What's going to happen to Blake and Murphy? Enzo and Cass? What's going to happen to these guys? What Vince McMahon doesn't understand is that he's sabotaging his own company. He's sabotaging his own future. Kevin Dunn is a fucking asshole. Why? If you are trying to sabotage Kevin Owens and you don't like Kevin Owens and you want to see him fail, there's a fucking problem with you. How is this right? In your mind, when you look at yourself in the mirror, how are you happy with what you do, man? Who do you want to see succeed? There's literally nobody else on the roster. You go out and sign these big name guys who are household names in the independent scene, bring them into the WWE, and all you do is portray them as, yeah, we got this prime talent, you don't have them. So what do you do? Oh, they're not special. We only want to push and make superstars who we think are special. Who we want to see. Who we think will be household names. Okay. So what does that mean for everybody else? The Baylors, the Nevilles, the Breezes, the Joes, the Kevin Owens. Actions now will speak louder than words. You go out there. Look, I don't understand how nobody can believe in Kevin Owens. If Kevin Owens can deliver a five-star fucking match with John Cena, I don't know what else he has to do, man. What does he have to do? What else could the man do to prove to you, Dunn and Vince, that he's ready. That he's a main event talent. I don't know. I don't know. But. But I do want you guys to calm down on the scene of bashing. I really do. It's not John Cena's fault. That Kevin Owens is being de-pushed. It's not. John Cena doesn't book his own matches. He doesn't script who wins and who loses. He doesn't make his own storylines. It's all Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn and what they want to do. Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon have no faith in Kevin Owens. 
They want to see him fail. Just what I'm about to read to you from Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Listen to this. Dave Meltzer has provided backstage speculation and news on why Kevin Owens was booked to lose at WWE Battleground on July 19th. Owens lost his second straight match with John Cena for the U.S. title and his third big match in 30 days at the pay-per-view. Fans took to social media to express their displeasure with Cena going over on Owens at Battleground, complaining about the fact that they believe Cena is never going to let any newcomer beat him in a program. However, as Dave Meltzer describes, it likely didn't have to do anything with the company not wanting to use Owens as a featured superstar on the main roster, but that may be... um, that, but that may be they did not completely believe he is special enough. Kevin Owens, not special enough to protect him. Now, I don't understand why WWE rushed Kevin Owens to the main roster, had him beat John Cena, and then all of a sudden, and put on a great match, by the way, the first time they went, they went at it. I don't understand how you put on a match like that and they don't find him to be special. Why'd you take the NXT title off him? Why'd you push him to the main roster? Why did you shove him down our throats? Why did you have him beat John Cena clean if you didn't think he was special? Now because your ratings are fucking terrible, you're gonna put John Cena in the main event at SummerSlam with Seth Rollins. Kevin Owens has nothing else to say about losing to John Cena? Oh, okay, I lost. I give up. I can't beat Superman. So you're gonna put John Cena in the main event program with the United States title because you can't face the fact that John Cena is not in the main event. You can't face the fact that your ratings are slumping because John Cena is not in the main event. Get over it. Push somebody else. There's going to be high roads and low roads. If you don't let these guys like Owens and Joe and Breeze and Neville, and Baylor, if you don't give them the fucking ball to run, how do you know if they're going to make it to the fucking end zone, man? I don't understand it. All you have to do is open your fucking eyes and watch NXT every fucking week. Watch NXT every time they put on a special event and tell me that they are not special. I don't understand it. As a wrestling fan, I am disgusted. As a WWE fan, I am disgraced. Why? I don't know. Meltzer writes, Battleground was really promoted as a two-match show. Cena Owens once again stole the show inside the ring with each kicking out of others, finishing maneuvers until Cena made him submit with the STF. The submission was Owens' third straight major loss and his loss to Cena and his NXT title loss to Finn Balor. While he is clearly a main roster star, the idea is he's something special and a protected headliner. Uh, That was out the window with that finish. That went right out the window with that finish. We all know that. We all know that, and Meltzer knows it. That's why he wrote it. The fact he wasn't protected from being a face in the crowd in the pull-apart brawl on Raw says the same thing. Kevin Owens was out there trying to break up The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. He was just another guy out there. He uh, he is now in the same league as fucking Primo and Epico. Los Matadores. He's in the same vein as a fucking Titus O'Neil. He's in the same fucking category as a Zack Ryder. Kevin Owens out there breaking up a brawl with two megastars Brock Lesnar, and The Undertaker. Did you see John Cena out there? Did you see Randy Orton out there? I don't remember. I don't remember seeing them. But you won't be caught dead seeing John Cena out there. I'll tell you that. Given that direction, they were headed. Was Cena challenging for the title on the next major show? His winning strong against Kevin Owens does make sense. If they were going to go with that all along. And have Cena challenge Rollins. Alright. 
But there was no reason he had to beat Owens again right now. As they could have held things off or done a finish that wasn't a clean submission to better protect Kevin Owens. Cena didn't even need the second win over Owens to be a viable title contender, which is absolutely fucking true. And they could have saved the first match, or the last match rather, for a time down the line. Okay? In a way, the Cena booking is like the Divas division. The company knows it has the transition. It wants to, but it can't pull the trigger. The dynamic is different, because unlike the women's division, Cena is still the big money, full-time draw in the company, even if Lesnar and Undertaker right now are completely outshining everyone as stars, and thus, you do have to protect Cena's spot until you find a new Cena, and Roman Reigns has not been that guy. Using the money guy in the position to make new stars while at the same time protecting him to where he has to go over at the end, mitigates the value of the new stars he makes if he has to beat them all when all is said and done. Instead of making new needle moving stars, they make more upper mid-card stars, and they've got the largest roster of mid-carders in their history. And that's one of the reasons when a big show comes, they have to bring people in from the outside to make it a big deal. Aside from Cena and Batista, who drew big at certain points, they haven't had successful, um, you know, transitions to make a new, true, top guy. And Cena was made over a decade ago. Now, this is where it gets interesting. WWE Hall of Famer, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and PWTorch.com's Wade Keller, who are both extremely behind Owens as a superstar with main event potential, also discussed his loss at Battleground on the latest Steve Austin show, and both men claimed that Cena winning the match was the right call for the company. Keller argued that if Owens had immediately conquered Cena in his first feud, there would be no other viable competitors for him to work programs with besides possibly Brock Lesnar, who is currently positioned as the number two babyface in the entire WWE. Cena is, and has been for the last 10 years, positioned as the number one babyface. If Owens defeats Cena in his first program on the main roster, there's nowhere to go but down for the guy as far as competitors go. The loss gives him a chance to be a sour heel, go on a path of destruction, and work his way back up the mid-card to the main event. Owens will still be featured heavily on the main roster, despite what early rumors Monday claimed, as Triple H and a slew of other officials love his mic work and in-ring ability, while others that are considered to be Vince McMahon's Right-hand men feel otherwise, like Kevin Dunn. All they do is kiss Vince McMahon's ass and suck his cock and get down on their hands and knees. Those guys are the cancer to WWE. Triple H brought him in for a reason, but Vince McMahon is sour because Monday Night Raw is terrible. Meanwhile, Triple H's additions with NXT and the way he's handling NXT has been nothing but revealed to be as the WWE's main competitor in their own fucking company and has been just admired as being the best independent promotion in the United States. That's why Vince McMahon is sour. Because he knows Triple H is doing a better job than he is. So you got Kevin Dunn who want to keep his job, right? Because Kevin Dunn will be replaced by Triple H. Or if Vince is no longer there, Triple H will replace Kevin Dunn. Because all he does is suck dick and kiss ass. Who needs him anymore? If Triple H is doing such a great job right now, who the fuck needs a Kevin Dunn? That's why Kevin Dunn is always whispering in Vince McMahon's ear, man. He doesn't want Triple H to move on closer to get in that position. To eventually take over Vince McMahon's spot. That's why. All political. These guys are not for the company. These guys are not for the business. These guys are not for the fans. 
These guys are for their own position, their own fucking paycheck, and their own fucking ego, man. And it's disgusting. Disgusting. The political bullshit that goes on in the WWE, man. I'm fucking sick and tired of reading stories like this. Especially after you, after you bring him up. And everyone now is in love with Kevin Owens. They're chanting his name. They're bringing signs to the fucking arena. They know who he is. He's a household name. Great. You got one part of it done. Now you're bringing him back down. Now you're bringing him back down. But I want you guys to understand. I'm upset too. There was even a story about Vince McMahon thinking Kevin Owens is out of shape. Kevin Owens is fat. He doesn't want any overweight slobs in the main event scene. I got a story about that this weekend if I can find it. If I can find it. I will definitely find it for you guys. I know I read it, but I don't have it in my notes right here. Owens will still be featured heavily on the main roster, despite what early rumors said. Triple H is a big fan of him. Kevin Dunn, Vince McMahon, and all Vince McMahon's goons are not. Owens is expected to work a, ma to work a match at SummerSlam on August 23rd with Cesaro. As well as the main event at NXT TakeOver on August 22nd in an NXT Championship rematch against Finn Balor. Alright, we're getting Kevin Owens versus Cesaro. You know what they're going to do at SummerSlam at the Barclays Center? They're going to tear the fucking roof down. Going to be match of the night. Simple. That's what you got to do if you're guys like Cesaro. If you're guys like Kevin Owens. Go out there. Don't mind this political bullshit. Go out there and just tear the fucking roof down. Give those fans something that they will be talking about for weeks, for months. Leave them wanting more. Send them home talking about what you did in that ring. That's all you got to do. That's all you have to do. That is the news on Kevin Owens. That is why Kevin Owens was booked to lose at WWE Battleground. And that is where he sits right now in the company. More than likely, will be working with Cesaro at SummerSlam in a 1v1 matchup in Brooklyn on August 23rd, while John Cena takes on Seth Rollins in a champion versus champion match for the WWE Championship. I'm pretty positive Seth Rollins retains the belt. I don't know. WWE's all over the place. You know, they got Undertaker and Lesnar. They got Rollins and Cena. Where does Lesnar fit in with Rollins? You know he's going to want revenge against Rollins. What does Owens do with Cena? Why is The Undertaker coming back a year and a half later to get revenge on Brock Lesnar? Why didn't it happen at WrestleMania? All these questions, man. All these questions. And you guys wanted to know what I thought about Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. The brawl on Monday Night Raw. JD, why didn't you do a Monday Night Raw review? I didn't want to. Yes, it was a great Raw. Yes, I didn't fall asleep. Yes, the brawl was fucking epic. WWE, brilliant with what they did with that brawl. I didn't give a shit. I didn't want to see another Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar match. But after that brawl, I don't give a fuck what goes on, man. Now I want to see it. Because of the intensity. Undertaker looks good. Brock Lesnar looked great. It's going to be fucking fire in Brooklyn, man. It's going to be fucking big. Alright, I got news on what WWE is thinking about with Taker, with Lesnar. Are they going to have Taker get his revenge, be one and done? Will they go on and fight again at WrestleMania and have the Undertaker with Tyra or Brock Lesnar? I don't know. I got new stories on that all weekend. Stay tuned to Off the Script. That is it. That is part one. That is the biggest story I have this weekend. Okay? That is the biggest story I have this weekend. The one with Kevin Owens. Let me see if I do have it in my notes. Let me see if I do have it in my notes about Kevin Owens and... Vince McMahon not wanting him in the fucking main event. Let me see here. I don't think I got it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I do got it. Before I go. Before I hang it up for part one. All right. Sunday night, Battleground, Owens lost to John Cena, blah, blah, blah. In the latest edition, again, of the radio show on the Wrestling Observer with Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez. All right. Possible reasons why Owens was booked to lose against John Cena. Points fingers at a potential backstage rift with WWE upper brass. To again explain this situation, there were two schools of thought on Kevin Owens from the start and the basic gist of what was some people's thought that he was going to make it and some people thought he wasn't going to make it. They thought he was going to fail. All right? And there were those who thought he was, wasn't going to make it and made sure that he got every opportunity 
to make it or else they would be wrong. You know what I mean, says Dave Meltzer? I shouldn't say they would be wrong. They wouldn't prove that they were right. So now whether he makes it or not, or he doesn't make it at all, there is a game going on and we're in the middle of the game. So some people think Owens is going to make it. Some people don't. All political. Again, all political. Many will recall Owens triumphantly debuting on WWE television, not before, not before long, uh, the Elimination Chamber, where he promptly beat John Cena in a clean finish. This was viewed per Meltzer as Owens' first opportunity to make it. As it has been reported in the past, Vince McMahon has not always been sold on some of the NXT talent coming out of the promotion. The developmental system is largely viewed as Triple H's project, with a few of those who have succeeded in NXT actually finding main roster success. This can be evidenced by those, such as those that I mentioned, Bo Dallas, Ascension, and Adam Rose. Last year, it was reported one of the reasons Vince was not behind many of these call-ups was because of his right-hand man, Kevin Dunn. Kevin Dunn, who has been one of WWE's primary producers for more than two decades, was reportedly not big on some of the talent's looks, which would seemingly fit the bill for the unconventional Owens, meaning that they thought Owens was out of shape. They thought Owens was fat, and they don't want someone who's out of shape, or who they think is out of shape, and fat, in the main event. Little do they know, Owens is not fat. That's the way his body type is. You can't change that, man. You can't. That's who he is. And the fact that he moves around like a fucking... 175 pound luchador doesn't make a fucking difference, right? I'm done. I'm done yelling. I'm done fucking complaining. Kevin Dunn is a fucking asshole. Vince McMahon is a fucking asshole. They will never understand what is down in NXT because they don't watch NXT. What happens when Finn Balor comes up to the main roster? Are you gonna fuck him too? I don't know. These guys are future WWE champions. To me, anyway. This is your future. Why are you gonna go out and sign these guys? Hideo Itami, Balor, Breeze, Joe. And you're not gonna give them the proper fucking recognition. These people are well-known all over the fucking world. They didn't even need the WWE. They came here because they want to build themselves a bigger audience, a bigger brand. WWE is the only stage in the United States to do that. But if you're not liked, apparently you're fucked. Political garbage, man. Doesn't matter how great you are in the ring. If Kevin Dunn doesn't like you, your career is fucked. That's what this episode of Off The Script pretty much boils down to, people. Kevin Dunn doesn't like you, and Vince McMahon doesn't like you, you might as well fucking quit. Because you're not going anywhere, man. Maybe they don't like Dolph Ziggler. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's the news. That's the news. That's off the script. Let me know. Seriously. Let me know what you guys think about this fucking story. About why Kevin Owens is being brought down a couple of notches on the WWE ladder. Wade Keller and Steve Austin make sense. I make some sense. I want you guys to calm down with the John Cena bashing. It's not his fault. I know everybody hates John Cena, but he didn't book himself to beat Kevin Owens. It's Vince McMahon. John Cena's in the main event now. Why? Because Vince McMahon doesn't know any better. He wants ratings. He wants fucking subscribers on the network. So what are you going to do? You're going to go to the fucking well that you went to so many fucking times before in the past. John Cena. John Cena's just there, people. Until the WWE builds another John Cena, and they got a few of them. Daniel Bryan could be one of them if he comes back. Finn Balor could be one of them. You know? I don't know. You got to make a new John Cena. WWE's not doing that because they refuse to give chances to the guys that they got. Plain and simple. That's off the script, guys. Let me know what you think down below. Leave me a comment. Rate it. Thumbs it up. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys are not subscribed to me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. 
Twitch, Instagram, and Facebook. Please go and follow me any way you can to stay up to date with what happens on my channel. And I need a few more t-shirts, guys. Listen to me. If you guys love the show, if you're a fan of JD, if you love Off The Script and everything that it stands for up until episode number 75, go out and buy a t-shirt, man. It would greatly be appreciated. I need a few more of them motherfuckers sold, and we're good to go. If you don't have one, go out and buy one, man. www.prowrestlingtees.com slash WWE off the script. Link is in the description down below. Great fucking t-shirts. I'm going to be holding a giveaway very, very soon. I will let you guys know about that. Stay tuned. Until then, I'll see you guys on Saturday with more news about The Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, and the potential WWE SummerSlam card already leaked. Does it look impressive to me? Letting you know right now, it does not. But I'll fill you guys in on Saturday. Until then, guys, take care. This is JD, and this is the number one fucking source right here on YouTube.com for all WWE off the script, guys. I'm JD, and I'll see you guys on Saturday morning.